My name is Michelle and I'm an academic at Swinburne. A lot of my research is in image processing, which is using computers and computer programs to interpret images. Computers don't have the same kind of knowledge about the world that you and I do. For instance, unless they are specifically programmed to do so, they couldn't identify what is in this picture, whereas you and I can immediately identify it as an aeroplane. However, computers can pick up on a lot of details and nuances that we as humans might miss. For instance, a computer program can identify the differences between these images, whereas we would really struggle with it. One of the tools that we use in image processing is the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform is an extension of the Fourier series, which we use for periodic continuous signals. The Fourier transform can take care of non-periodic signals, like this white noise. One of the things that we are often interested in with image processing is reading text. The fact is that while humans are very good at reading handwritten and printed text, computers really struggle with it. This is the reason that some websites use these capture images. These allow the website to make sure that it is dealing with a real human instead of a computer or a robot. Having a computer read text is useful for the post office, for transferring books to electronic copies, for number plate recognition, and for automating the input of handwritten forms. One of the methods that is used for recognising characters is to use the Fourier transform. When we apply a transform to something, we retain the information that is captured in the original data, but we display it in a different way. It's the same as taking these waveforms, which are displayed in Cartesian space, and displaying them using a log scale instead. All the information is still there, it is just easier to interpret it in this new form. If we take the Fourier transform of a signal, we move it from the time domain to the frequency domain. A step function in the time domain becomes a sync function in the frequency domain. If we move back to the time domain, you will still get back to the original data. As a quick aside, the sync function in the time domain becomes a step function in the frequency domain. But a word of warning, it doesn't work like that for all signals. We can also move images into the frequency domain. This image of parallel graduated lines becomes two white dots on a black background in the frequency domain. This white circle becomes a pattern that looks like ripples from a stone thrown in the water. And this white square on a black background becomes a cross. The more you look at the patterns in the frequency domain caused by these simple shapes, the more you can predict what might happen if you change the design. For instance, if I change the spacing between the graduated lines, the dots in the frequency domain move apart. And if I rotate the lines, the dots rotate as well. We can also take the Fourier transform of more complex images. This image is very famous in the image processing community, and here it is in the frequency domain. The lines in the frequency domain image correspond to the legs of the tripod and the line of the horizon. What researchers have found is that we can actually exploit the lines and circles and their corresponding patterns in the frequency domain to use it to recognise characters. Let's look at the letter A, for example. Pretty much however you draw it, it has two upright or close to upright lines and a crossbar at the bottom. When we transfer these to the frequency domain, they all end up looking quite similar. And they definitely look more similar to one another than the B, or a C, or a D. In fact, we can use the representation of written numbers and letters in the frequency domain to identify what letter or number is in the time domain, and so we use the Fourier transform to identify letters and numbers. We can also use the frequency domain to remove noise from an image. For instance, in this case, the image has been corrupted with diagonal lines. These lines appear as very bright spots and circles in the frequency domain, so we can remove them using a filter. This is the filter applied, and this is the image with the noise removed. We can also remove white noise or speckle by removing the low frequency components of the signal in the frequency domain. These sit at the extremities of the image so we only keep the signals in the middle. This is the filter applied, and this is the result. While it may look a bit blurry to you and I, there is now no noise, so the computer can make better judgments about the image. I've only shown you a few examples, but you can see from this short presentation just how useful the Fourier is for image processing and analysis. And once you understand the basics, it isn't too difficult to apply.